Hey everyone, I'm Flo. I'm Dude. And we are all about life made simple, ordinary, and joyful. Thanks for joining us on our journey to a debt free 2020. Last week, we talked about saving on our grocery bills and how we can eke out just a little bit more. And this week, we're going to talk about dining. Dining out is one of those expenditures that can really get away from you really fast. Without yeah. And not even know it. Yeah, for sure. When we were younger in our... Younger. <laughs> when we were younger without kids and making more money, we spent a lot eating out. I mean, if you haven't noticed, we love food mm -hmm. and we really enjoyed eating out. There are so many just great restaurants out there and um, we really did enjoy eating at fine dining restaurants and... Just more upscale restaurants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the kids came along and our jobs uh, situation changed and we had less discretionary income, we just had to become more mindful about how the money was spent. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing that we have invested in cooking tools and devices that help us make pretty decent steaks and chops at home that now we just avoid going to steakhouses and chop houses, which is good for our wallet. Yeah, absolutely. And my greatest investment of saving money and eating better at home is finding the right wife. <laughs> True. So tip number one, don't over order. I know it's really hard when you're hungry and you're looking at the menu and you just want all the things. It's the same thing when you go to the grocery store or supermarket mm -hmm. and you're hungry. You know that old adage, you know, just don't go shopping when you're when you're hungry. And that definitely applies when you're dining out because you have that fantastic menu in front of you, most likely with great photos of that food, and you're just going to wind up over ordering. Mm -hmm. I remember when we moved down to the States, when we lived in Vancouver prior to living in the US, we would order an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert if we were going out. And when we tried doing that in the US, it was just like, oh my goodness, it was just so oh, much yeah. food and there's just no way and I think because of the larger portions in the US at the time we became conscious of how much we were ordering so we stopped ordering appetizers and often we didn't have room for dessert so we just focused on eating that entree and when we moved back to Vancouver I think we just kind of carried that with us and I believe actually the portion sizes in Vancouver has probably increased over the years but uh, we, if we're going to order an appetizer, we usually try to share the appetizer and order the entree and often we'll have no room for dessert or the, we do the opposite. Just forget the appetizer, order your entree, and maybe you'll have time for dessert and often that's shared. It does contribute to your intake of food and the portion control and it, you get a plus side on, on that one too when you get to... Uh mind how many calories you take in. Tip number two, look for discounts. Often restaurants will have a happy hour or uh, offer prefix menus, as well as possibly picking up gift cards from, like say Costco, I know at our Costco, we have gift cards for uh, restaurant chains that you pay, you're, sorry, you pay $80 and you get a $100 gift card. So that just stretches your money a little bit further. We haven't done it in a while, but there are group buy apps where you can look at the, the latest deals. So just look out for the, the terms and conditions of those group buys to make sure that you're getting what you're purchasing mm -hmm. and that there isn't a certain expiry date of those discounts. Also, one other thing about group buys is I know for myself, that in the past I have purchased a lot of those group buy things and then forgotten about them. They just sit in an account and say, oh, it's valid for a year or whatever, but mm -hmm. we forget to use it. Right. And then that's just a waste of money. Yeah, too. yeah. at the very least, they'll give you the, the purchase price, value, the yeah. value of what you purchase, but you won't get that added uh, discount. Tip number three, choose lunch over dinner. Often a dinner menu will have higher prices than a lunch menu. I find that if we're going to go out for lunch, there are often lunch specials and at a, a less expensive price. And also for uh, 
you parents out there, when you go for lunch, usually your kids are at school. <laughs> so it's just the two of you. <laughs> you roll in a date and you save money. Tip number four, eat family style. Last week, we went out for a dude's birthday and we went to a Japanese tapas restaurant where they serve a lot of small plates and large plates. And so for our family of four, we ordered six different tapas and that filled us. We looked over at the other table of four and they did not eat family style. They ordered three or four tapas each and some of them ordered the same things. So I just, like when I looked over, I'm like, oh my goodness, they could have shared, they could have experienced more. There were so many choices, but they just ate what they ordered for themselves. And I'm sure that their bill came up to like at least 50 bucks per person, but our whole meal cost us like $62. They had a pitcher of beer too. So the alcohol, uh, especially in our province, they have to add a, an additional tax as well. So mm -hmm. it's like plus, 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 plus. And we enjoy eating a variety of different food, including the children's. So it wouldn't fly if we all ordered our, our own and not shared. Yeah, that would be our financial downfall for sure because <laughs> we do like the same thing. So might as well broaden our culinary horizons and have more different flavors mm -hmm. on the table as opposed to just, you know, having your limited plates. Mm -hmm per person. And I did mention that we only ordered six, but even after the six, I did ask ask around the table if they were still hungry and wanted more food because you can always order more. And um, everyone was satisfied and they decided to go for dessert instead. So we left the restaurant and then we went to uh, a dessert place and had dessert there which was about $25 altogether. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we barely finished our dessert. I think Ella and I shared something and you and Noah both yeah. had something separate. There's something to be said about having a reasonably sized meal. And then we took a nice stroll around the corner to the dessert place. And by that time, I guess the food had settled in your belly <laughs> and uh, having dessert and just getting mileage out of that food that you already have. And mm -hmm. it's just a nice, nice amount of food at the end of the day or at the end of the night mm -hmm. with dessert. And it's, you get a full range of the whole meal. Yep. Less than a hundred bucks, including tip. Tip number five, never order drinks. We're not heavy drinkers, so it doesn't really appeal to us to order alcohol, but we don't even order coffee or tea or, or soda. soda when we're out because really you're gonna pay two, three bucks for a soda. It might be bottomless, but I, I don't, I, I can't slam back <laughs> endless amounts of, of, of pop Canadians mm -hmm. or soda. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work for me. So I, I, over time we've actually just enjoyed mm -hmm. water with, mm -hmm. our, with our meal. And we're not, you know, we're not saying don't order. Well, we are saying that if you wanna save money. I guess essentially that's what we're saying is if you want to save money, then avoid ordering drinks out. However, we totally get a nice glass of wine, goes well with your meal and all of that. That's where restaurants make the most margin is mm -hmm. on their alcohol. So yeah. that's why they're always asking if you want to have another one, would you like another one? Would you like a top up on mm -hmm. that? They yeah. do that for a reason is because that's, it's a huge markup on the alcohol. And then in this province of British Columbia, they have an added tax. So it adds up and then you got to pay for that tax and you got to pay for the tips on that. So it does add up. Hey, you know what? I, I like a good glass of wine or a beer at home and you look at the difference in the pricing, it's huge. This is not really a tip, but we have found that eating at certain ethnic restaurants, depending on where you live, could be way less expensive than eating at, um, I don't know, at a chain restaurant or um, I have to say more American food. For example, when we lived in San Francisco, Mexican was inexpensive, Thai was inexpensive, and back in Vancouver, Thai is not inexpensive. Thai and Mexican are quite expensive, I find, 
Uh, but we have other inexpensive options, which is Chinese, Japanese, Korean. Yeah, there are a lot of options. It just depends on where you live and what's available. So get out there, try different foods, and while you're doing it, save money. Absolutely. Check out our other money saving videos over there. See you in the next video.